hi guys and welcome back to my channel um i had my entire september content calendar planned out which which you might have actually seen on my content calendar video and then about halfway through the month i realized that it's my three-year tbt anniversary and i feel like we need a video acknowledging that especially because i have one for each of my other my one year and my two years and then also even like one month and six months just every so often i like to talk about the things that i have learned in the past you know a bit of time so in this video this is my dog in this video we're going to be talking about things that i've learned specifically in this third year of tbting so we'll chit chat about things that i really discovered this year that really like light bulb moments that went off and things that really made a difference in my tbt store this year in particular doing this video meant i really had to sit down and think through like how the last year went and things that i learned learned and all the things that I did and it was a really good experience so even if you you know are not telling anybody anything about TPT I would suggest that you spend some time and just think through like what you have learned on Teachers Pay Teachers so far this year um also my dog is playing with her squeaky toy so if you hear all the noise then we're just gonna deal with it um this is gonna be a little bit of a chatty chit chat video so grab a cup of coffee and let's dive right on in all right so this third year of teachers pay teachers has been really interesting i said i think in the like things i've learned in two years of tpt i said i think this year is going to be kind of like the year everything fits and i was really excited about it and i have to say that i was right i find in just like normal circumstances once you've been doing something for three years you just know it better think about like when you first started teaching your first year you know nothing you don't even know what you don't know the second year you now know what you didn't know but you may not know exactly how you do want to do it and then once you get to the third year it's like you've been there before you've done it before you know what doesn't work and you know a few things that do work and so the third year i find just really makes a huge difference i also see this um all over the internet with people in online business oh my goodness there was a time I found like a couple of different YouTubers and all of these completely different people, completely different niches, like had nothing to do with each other. But these people I started following, all of them I started following in their third year of doing YouTube or their third year of doing this or their third year of doing that. And I just really found that once you get to that like three year mark of consistent work throughout the three years that it really does make a huge difference and so that is actually my point number one is that the first thing i've learned in this year this past year is to really take that long-term view i heard about this a lot you know i always say treat your business like a business and i say you know you gotta sow the seeds for the future but i really really mean it because what happened this year is i noticed a lot of things that i had been doing things that i had been sowing in my metaphorical field um really came to fruition this year and it just kind of took off and if I hadn't been doing all the work all that time it would not have amounted to what it did this year just from blog posts and videos and my email list I grew a, my email list a ton which we'll talk about a little bit later um, and all of these things that grew because I had put in the work and then now it's been enough time that we have some traction you know Pinterest has been rolling Instagram's been rolling YouTube's been rolling the blog has been rolling and as time has gone on it's just you know picked up and picked up and this really this past year it really um picked up in a like whole new way which has been amazing so just as you're working remember you know i think all the time about how many hours i put in at the beginning when i was making no money and i would put in the work and day in day out you know y'all know i started as a blogger so i did a whole year of blogging before i even started tbt and so i had all this time that i would spend working on these things to get basically no return back for a very long time and so if you're especially if you're new if you're like nothing is working um remember that every minute that you are working on your business even if you're not making progress right now even if you're not seeing sales right now you're sowing the seeds for the future and the better you the more you work now the more it'll take off in the future so really make sure that you have that long-term view um, kind of along with that, this year I really gained a new appreciation for long form content, which you probably think is hilarious because I talk about long form content all the time because I think it's so important. Long form content is any sort of content that you put that is searchable, 
that people can consume in a longer format. So a blog post or a YouTube video. So a blog post or a YouTube video, I would even venture to say like a Facebook Live if you do those on the regular or um, a podcast, like those sorts of things are long form content because you can cover quite a bit, you can talk quite a bit, you can explain quite a bit and people can also find you and then learn to learn about whatever topic you're talking about. They learn about your business. They learn about all these different things that really helps them to connect with you. I won't go too much into it, but I will link a video about long form content down below. But this year I gained an even deeper appreciation for my long form content. Um, my blog sent a ton of people over to my TPT shop, as well as my YouTube channel, sending quite a few people to my TPT shop and um, just really growing. This time last year is when I split this YouTube channel in my Becca's music room. And so that's all, all my music stuff is housed on a separate channel, completely separate. I started it around this time last year. I don't remember exactly when, um, but it's grown to over 2,000 subscribers already, which seems pretty quick to me, you know, like only a year. And it's, you know, monetized now. And it's just, it's really, it's, 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 it's rocking and rolling. And we're finally getting to the point where like people are commenting and people are sharing and people are finding me from YouTube and messaging me, which is awesome. And so that's really wonderful. And specifically, I find that a lot of the videos that are the most popular, the blog posts that are the most popular, are ones that I wrote a really long time ago. <laughs> and so the point of this being that having that long form content helps to continually drive people to your store year after year after year. So I have videos that I made two years ago. I have, um, which obviously didn't get put onto the channel. So last year it's very complicated. We're not gonna worry about it. Um, but they're old videos and I have blog posts that are three and four years old that are still getting lots of hits, that are still gaining traffic. And then they're still sending traffic over to my TBT shop. And so even though, you know, I do continue to put out content, just thinking about the lifespan of that and how long that lifespan has been compared to like an Instagram post. Um, this year I actually did try really hard on social media. I really dug into Instagram, watched all the videos, learned all the algorithm things. I had a crazy posting schedule. I was posting twice a day. I was like doing all these things. Um, I joined TikTok and Y'all, TikTok stresses me out. So TikTok usually is like, I just post my reel and then I get off and I don't talk to anybody. But um, my point being that on Instagram, you know, I'll post something and it'll get traction for a few hours, maybe like a day. I usually find like 24 hours and then like that's pretty much it on Instagram just from like what I've noticed as far as how many comments and likes that I receive. Um, as opposed to those blog posts that I made four years ago, they're still working. And those YouTube videos I made a long time ago, they're still working, they're still churning out, they're still sending referrals over to my TPT shop. And so I did, I really, I wanted to try like really dive deep, really go hard. Um, and I really tried for a few months and I posted tons of reels, I posted tons of this and tons of that. And it did grow quite a bit, but it didn't get nearly as good as I wanted it to. And so I am glad I did the experiment because it gave me a better appreciation for my long form content because I was like, okay, this really does matter. This really is where I should be spending my time. And that um, was a really good, really good lesson to me. Now, other people do great on Instagram. Some people get way more referrals from Instagram than from other places. For me personally, I am much happier to spend my time on my blog, on my YouTube channel, where I can make content that's going to continue to get seen and continue to get views and to continue to send traffic over to my store. Number three thing that I learned this year is to um, get a little bit trendier. <laughs> I have never been a trendy person. And so even just saying that makes me like, ugh, gross. Um, but what I mean by this is following kind of doing more seasonal resources, doing more um, things that are kind of buzzwords, things that are just popping up all throughout and trends that are popping up on Teachers Pay Teachers even. This year I did quite a few resources that were um, season specific, month specific, stuff like that, that even more usually than I have in the past. And the outcome was very profitable. <laughs> now I feel like I've gotten a bad rap for talking badly about seasonal resources. I love seasonal resources. My only thing about seasonal resources is that if you don't have a lot of products, having seasonal resources can um, 
kind of eat up your time when you need to have some evergreen products. Because if you have 25 products and 10 of them are all for Christmas, then the rest of the year you only really have 15. So I always suggest that you, you know, work more on your evergreen content, but I now have like 460 products. So if I want to make some seasonal products, you know, like it's, it's not a big deal. And so I have found that that made a huge difference um, this year in particular. I had quite a few resources that did really well during Black History Month. I had quite a few resources. Oh, I had one, just one. I made one that was like St. Patrick's Day ish and that did amazingly well. I was very shocked and you know, just a couple of those types of things and then different um, types of resources. So like I tried virtual field trips and just different types. I tried boom cards and just different things like that, that were trending and just kind of trying them out, see if I like them. And a lot of them paid off really, really well. Now, if you're going to do this, I would suggest doing one and then seeing how it goes, which is actually going to take me to the next point, which is this year, I really learned to follow the data. I have to admit that I am a huge fan of just like work, 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 create, create, create. And I don't like to go back and look at data because frankly, I'm like, but I could be making a new resource. I could be filming a new video. Why would I want to go back and look at my old videos when I can make a new video? And I, I, I very much tend to be that kind of person. So for me, I really have never done a good job looking at data until the last few months. I've really gotten better. Specifically, every month I do a couple of things just really simply, and I'm going to expand this in year number four, but um, I always particularly look at what has been selling the most in this past month. And I always write those down and then come up with a possible like um, sister product. So if I have, you know, this product's like, oh my gosh, this month with back to school has been my stick figure movement activities which is very depressing because it's like the cheapest thing in my store, but you know what? It's fine. And so this month I will write down the top 10 things that sold this month. And then next to them, I'll write something similar. So stick figure movement activities did really well. So I would like to make another set of activities that is a similar one, like maybe do partner stick figure activities or seated stick figure activities or something like that, where it's just a little bit different, maybe like yoga poses. Um, so that then they can go together, they can be bundled, I can you know, send people to both of them and hypothetically increase my profits. Um, I found really good success with that this year when I noticed that one thing was picking up, I, I would sit down and write them out so that I would know that those were picking up and then I would make sure that I came up with ideas that were similar so that I could then have similar products and then bundle them. And this contributed a lot to um, my increase in profits this year in particular, because people were already purchasing, you know, the one thing and I kind of, um, capitalized on that. And I kind of, you know, jumped on that one being popular and added something else that could go along with it. And so that worked really, really well in just following the data. So in the next few months, I'm really looking at the data and kind of figuring out like a good system of what I want to look at, what I want to make sure I keep track of, how I'm going to use that data in the future and stuff like that. But as of now, that is where I am. The next one's going to feel very different from that. And that is don't be afraid to experiment. I tried so many new <laughs> types of products this year, which in part was because we were mostly online. I was online almost the entire year. This year I tried a lot of new types of products, new kinds of products. Um, in particular, a lot of it being because we were online for the entire <laughs> um, last year, we were a little bit hybrid, but it was like, I'd have like four kids in front of me and the rest online two days a week and the rest of the time they were all online. So I had to really get creative and try new things. So I tried out all sorts of different types of resources. I tried digital matching games and where the kids are dragging things and um, virtual field trips. And I tried this and I tried that. And I just tried a bunch of different things and some of them didn't do well. And that's okay. <laughs> and other ones did really, really well. And so in the experimenting, you know, if I try one of these, one of those, and just kind of seeing how it goes, I have been able to really figure out, you know, new types of resources that are working really well. So I would encourage you not yet. Yes. Follow the data, but also be fine with experimenting because you might experiment and then find that something's your new favorite and that is okay. Um, 
in your experimentation i would however just do like one and see how it goes just do like a tester see how that one goes and then you can add more later if it does well but don't be afraid to experiment all right and my last one might sound a little bit cheesy and that is don't be afraid to dream big and by big i mean so big that it maybe even scares you a little bit i um i've mentioned before and we'll talk more about this probably at the end of the year so this year i this calendar year i set a goal for how much like how much money i wanted to make and then i set like a stretch goal and then i set a crazy goal and this crazy goal was one that was way higher than i thought i could ever possibly get especially this year i thought you know maybe one day down the road but this year i was like eh, no not in 2021 but i i just i really got my heart set on it and in that i really stuck to it and so even though i knew it was a crazy goal i knew i probably wouldn't hit it um I really started thinking like, okay, well, if I was going to hit it, then what would I need to do? How would I need to, you know, fix up my shop? How would I need to create revenue during June and July when I have like nothing? How could I do this? How can I change this? How can I increase profits? You know, how can I just make sure everything's going to work the best in order to actually hit this goal? In addition to that, I've been tracking it. I actually, I maybe don't suggest this, but every single day I write down in a little like calendar just on the day how much money i made that day and i know in my head actually even have it written down if i make this much money i'll meet my first goal if i make this much money i meet my stretch goal and if i make this much money every day then i'll meet my crazy goal and so that's kind of a good way for me to judge like where i kind of am is by how much money i've been making each day and how much that's going to average out to the end of the year now obviously it changes because june and july are very sad and you know during the tpt sales you know we have really good days and those are totally different but having that like really intense focus on said crazy goals has really made a huge difference um and like you know i think about it i know that it's there i'm not like obsessed with it but i definitely i know it's there i know what i'm shooting for i know what i'm going for and i'm tracking it so i know whether or not i'm on track now i'm not sure if i will hit it or not we'll see in the next couple of months because i you know school's just started back in so we're kind of seeing where everything lands with you know this new school year and could and all the stuff um but yeah don't be afraid to hit big goals and the reason i say that is because i've already passed my first goal and so if i had just stuck with like oh this is a reasonable goal let's go with this i maybe would have hit it maybe wouldn't even hit it but because i was like this is what we're shooting for i've already passed that and it's only september and so if i land anywhere in here i'm doing better than i would have if i had set like a safety goal so I would really encourage you when you're looking at your goal setting to really dream big and see, you know, how far you can go. And if you don't hit it, like the end of, you know, the world's not going to end. I asked a kid today, <laughs> oh my gosh, first graders in there, this person cut, <laughs> I just looked at their, I looked at a kid today, I was like, are we going to die? And she was like, no. And I was like, well, then it's probably not a big deal. And it like blew her mind. She was like, what? Um, but it's just, you know, it's not the end of the world if we don't hit the goal. But because you're shooting really high, it's really going to help you. Um, now, the flip side of that is that you really have to back it up with work. So back it up with focus, back it up with work. I have spent a lot of time both planning and also executing plans and figuring out, you know, how can I follow the data to make sure that my products are going to be ones that are profitable? How can I put in these sources of revenue that are going to keep coming like my YouTube channel and my blog posts versus spending my, all my time on Instagram where something's only good for a day. I'm looking for those long-term solutions and really being focused and really working on, you know, going hard. Um, I really think that if I hadn't set such a crazy goal this year that I wouldn't be anywhere near where I am. So you'll find more details about all of that out when I do the income report at the end of the year, but we shall see how it goes. Um, I also will say that when it comes to setting money goals, you need to kind of break them down and we'll talk about this more. Actually, I would like to do some goal setting videos in the next few months. So leave your questions about goals down below. 
Um, but one thing is you always want to break it down. So it's not just like, here's this random amount of money that I need to make, but actually think like, how am I going to do that? And that was something I did at the beginning of this year is I broke it down. And I was like, okay, if I make this much money from this and this much money from this, you know, how many products do I need to make? What types of products looking at the year and thinking like, are there holes in my product lines? Do I need to make sure that, um, so one thing I noticed is that my springtime, I don't have like any good springtime resources. So next year, I know that that's some place I need to go. Um, but just looking through and thinking through like, how am I actually going to make this happen? Also really helps. So we'll talk more about goal setting in the next few months. Leave your goal setting questions down below, but just really, really like dream big and commit to it and get excited about it. And, you know, put a picture up on your wall because that's what I have. And I think about my future plans all the time. And I'm so excited for all the things that are coming, but also enjoying life right now. So I hope that was helpful. If you are a new TPT seller, then definitely, you know, put in those seeds. It's gonna, it's gonna turn out. If you do the work, it will work. So if you are a TPT seller, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, especially if you made it all the way to the end of the video, because we talk all things TPT all the time. So definitely hit that subscribe. And also soon we'll be having mistakes that I made in the first three years of my TPT shop. So I would like to make a, another you know actually sat down and wrote them down so that I would know uh, stop. oh my gosh dogs why are you so noisy I love you you're very cute and you're very sweet but you're just so loud when you drink water why is it so loud when you drink water huh I wish they could see your ears right now. I know you just like want me to pet you. Okay, this is this is how we're doing the rest of the video. All right, just as long as you're quiet. Mm -hmm.